As people, we all share many common ideas and beliefs. Killing's bad, helping others is good, and we all deserve equal rights and opportunities. It's a baser part of who we are. You can go almost anywhere and these ideas will usually ring true, but it's not necessarily that simple. We like to think that despite our differences in worldviews, we can come to fully understand one another. Rarely is that ever the case. Nevertheless, we, as individuals, have our own unique ideals and quirks. The same applies to countries and cultures. If, say, you were to ask me to go grab a bag of milk from the store, I'm going to be a little confused. Milk bags in the US are extremely uncommon, if they're even here in the first place, meaning you'll likely only ever encounter a carton of milk or a gallon. In Japan, people usually have different pairs of shoes depending on what they're doing. Wearing them in home is unusual. They usually leave them at the door, something we don't do in the West. We may have shoes for running or formal occasions, but they're usually in our room, a closet, or on our feet. Culture is a system that we use to dictate the world around us based on collective beliefs. It tells others how we think, what our mannerisms are, and generally what is acceptable to us. Such as America being incredibly sensitive to sexual content but numb to violence, yet with Japan being quite the opposite. Nintendo may alter the sexy bits for the West, but Sony removes the violent bits for the East. It's so natural we forget it exists until such instances arise, but it is constantly evolving. 20 years ago, the US saw homosexuality as an evil you could justifiably be fired for, but now that's it's illegal. People from that era with that mindset still exist, but most have shifted with the culture's advancements, or at least they keep very hush-hush about it. Those watching this right now are likely gamers, and are associated with its culture as a result, which in turn has its own subset of unique cultures that differ depending on region or category. In the West, esports is still a growing concept. It's slowly become more popular to the point that ESPN is now airing Smash Brothers events. People can live off games like Dota and StarCraft and win millions Millions. Yet in South Korea, they're miles ahead of us. There, it's so mainstream that pro players are as highly regarded as actors or singers. Lim Yo Hwan is a former pro StarCraft player, and he's married to actress Kim Kao Young. Both are celebrities, and Lim might be more famous than Kim depending on who you ask. This type of marriage isn't seen as all that odd, while here it would certainly leave the majority perplexed. Here in the West, the term gamer is stigmatized, and we're still trying to break free from that. We've been making progress for years, but it isn't as substantial as many of us would like to think it is. By being a gamer and indulging in the culture, we separate ourselves from others, and that's not a bad thing. It's nice to indulge in what you love, but you have to remember that when debating issues, our culture gets in the way and shows us where the line of divide truly is. Telling your mom oh, the cake is a lie joke may not get across to her the same way it would a friend. There's a gap in understanding. A good example in how culture interprets the media we consume is persona. Persona 4 with Kanji Tatsumi. If, say, I was to ask you, what was Kanji's story in Persona 4, I'd likely hear a lot of people saying he was a gay man in denial of his sexuality. A very western perception brought on by his dungeon and shadow, amplified in twisted versions of his oppressed side. But this isn't the case, in fact Kanji is struggling with his masculinity. He fears how he's viewed because of his feminine hobbies. Kanji even states the issue isn't about women or men, but being accepted. In Japanese culture, homosexuality is not viewed in black and white, good or evil. It's rare to even be judged for it because their society is based on Buddhism, not Christianity. It's separate from their lives and generally what you do with your sexual life is ignored. The citizens' main focus is themselves, so being outspoken about who you are is frowned upon. This leads gay Japanese people to lead closeted lives, so not to stick out, and I've been told it's similar in Sweden. Yet Japanese people base their personalities around homosexuality or cross-dressing quite often. It's very open yet very closed at the same time. The perception, of course, is largely brought on by the individual, but homosexuality is so common in Japan's history that it's accepted by the majority. Kanji's story makes a lot more sense with Japanese cultural context than it does a Western one, but that doesn't make the English interpretation wrong, at least not to us. Take for instance the recent Fire Emblem debate. A brief retread, in the West, Soleil is seen as a lesbian going through conversion therapy, something that is deeply ingrained in our history. Chalk it up to bad writing or misinterpretation in the West, but in Japan, this scene was perfectly normal. We see Soleil as a lesbian because she fits our definition of one, that or she's bisexual. That's how we see it because to us, that's just how it works. Not so in Japan. In Japan, Soleil is a class S case, a semi-popular genre of Japanese fiction. 
think lesbian until graduation. In this genre, young Japanese schoolgirls date others of the same sex as a means of practice for dating men. After a certain point, usually middle school, these women are supposed to break off from these relationships and identify as either gay, bisexual, or hetero. The friendship will usually remain, but without the romance. Failure to break free from this is perceived as a sign of immaturity. But wait, that sounds like Soleil was definitely a lesbian or bi person who later became straight, right? Not quite. As stated earlier, this is practice. Soleil is hetero and her fear of men and comfort with women is what gets in the way of her maturing past being an S-class. It's only through her S-supports that she's finally able to break free from this. We view the event as conversion therapy, but to Japan it's a sign of Soleil maturing, and that's the intention it was written with. Localization will handle her character for a western viewer as it should, and to those that claim we shouldn't let companies dictate what we can and can't handle when content is altered in a game during localization, you have to remember that we ourselves are dictating what we can handle via our culture, the very product of our beliefs, even if we, a very vocal minority, may not agree with them. Despite popular belief, Japan is a largely sex-positive culture, but they do have their own issues within the LGBT community, such as gay marriage still being illegal in an overwhelming majority of the country. Because it's handled so differently in the West, to Japan, our definition of gay conversion therapy doesn't exist. It's just not there. Japan's LGBT community did have issues with fates, mainly with Rajat and Niles being the only bisexual characters outside the main character, yet both psychotic in some ways. Outside of this, their issues weren't really the same as ours, outside of both parties saying that the magic potion bit should have just been left out entirely. Many were only made aware of the issue with Soleil because of the western controversy itself. The Japanese LGBT community even made a petition to start a dialogue with Nintendo, not out of anger or malice, but so that they could better understand them and improve their LGBT characters going forward. Some of this sounds really foreign. It doesn't agree with us because this isn't the way things operate in our world. Even something such as numbers, what we take for a universal language, actually aren't all that universal. We use them in quite different ways, be it what base we use or simply how they're written. But while the way we use numbers may be different, it serves a valid purpose, and just as much as we may think our system works better than another culture's does, they will likely say the same and that theirs is more beneficial. Neither is wrong, both arguments are due to how we were brought up and how our culture has affected us. Culture divides us, it separates us, and it is shaped by our lifestyle and beliefs, yet in that regards it is so compelling that it makes the study of others all the more fascinating. It may not be there intentionally, but it will always exist. And frankly, that's part of what makes this world so worth exploring and learning about. And hey, if you want to learn more fascinating things, I'd recommend checking out Tom Scott's stuff. He's really great and I promise you won't regret it. But while you're here, why not check out some of my other stuff? It really helps me out in ways you wouldn't believe. If you want to see the channel grow, give it a like, share it, and maybe tell me what you thought about the video in the comments. It's all very much appreciated and I couldn't do any of it without you. Thanks a lot and I'll see you in the comments.